Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rylan Russell. I'm at a church called Central Baptist Church in Owasso, Oklahoma. And tonight is a special night because we're actually meeting up here on a Thursday for a special night of worship. And I thought I'd just kind of share my thought process on how I kind of build this night of worship and arrange the, the flow of the service and maybe share some different elements that we utilize to kind of help our people worship in different ways. So we got about three hours before we're gonna get started and uh, I'll just take you along for the ride. Here he is, my pastor. Hey, what, what song are you most excited about us um, doing tonight? Whatever one that you're gonna not sing, you're gonna kind of get back and just play the guitar <laughs> so let the real singers sing. It'd be perfect. That's because he, that's because he didn't know what songs we were doing. <laughs> so this is our worship center. It seats about 450 regularly, but we took out quite a few chairs to add space in the back here. The first time that we did this, we actually took out those side sections over there and way over there but we realized that people kind of felt awkward to get to those stations if you were all the way on that side of the room to get over here so we ended up taking these back sections out which works a lot better all right so the question is why even do one of these nights of worship for me i am always trying to help my congregation grow in the ways that we worship god to be the most biblical that we can and honestly it's really tough in the 18 to 20 minutes that you have on a sunday morning to really like pastor your your church in that way and so these nights allow for that the other goal is that uh you know a lot of our church is like serving on sunday mornings doing so many different things that your headspace is really hard to just jump right in and worship when you're doing so many different things. We have small groups and Sunday school classes and all the volunteers. And then uh, the third reason is that to reinforce this idea that it's not just singing, that worship is more than that. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the worship stations that we have set up here in our room. Let me just break those down for you really quickly. So the first worship station that our people encounter is right whenever they walk through these doors. Each entrance has a table with a bunch of rubber bands and a station called Stretch Yourself. And the idea is that everyone will take a rubber band, place it on their wrist as a reminder to allow God to stretch us in our worship of Him. This station is called Robbing from God. People take a post-it note and fill out an IOU basically to God. And the idea is, you know, to think about what have we been robbing God of? Our time, maybe it's a skill, a talent, or maybe it is money. And they fill that out and drop it in the offering plate as a confession. This station is just a testimony station where people can fill out the slips of red paper with kind of a cardboard testimony thing and clip it onto the cross using red pieces of paper to kind of symbolize the blood that Jesus shed for us. And that's the idea, you know, how was our life before Christ and what is it like now? This is just a praise and adoration station. I have a poster up there on the wall that says God is my, and I have a list here of all of the different names and attributes of God that people can use a marker and write which one they identify with most in their life right now. This station is called Heart of Stone. It's kind of an experiential station where you take a piece of ice in your hand as a symbol of our stony heart, and we ask God to melt away our stony heart as we meditate on Psalm 51.10. This station is called Sowing Seeds, and it's trying to remind us to pray for the lost, to have a burden for lost souls. And so people take a popsicle stick and write someone that they know that needs Christ on it, that they would pray that uh, God would work in their lives and that they would accept him. So they pray, they take a little bit of the soil in their hand, and as they're holding that soil, they put the popsicle stick in and just pray that God would give uh, that person's heart fertile soil for the gospel. All right, so there you go. If you would like a copy of the PDF of all of these different worship stations, uh, I'm going to put a link in the description for you to grab that. If you are already a subscriber to the email list, then you have already gotten that email, so check it out. These were kind of like accumulated from all kinds of different sources on the internet. I don't know where they were. <laughs> they were just free things, whether I found them on 
Pinterest or a blog or something like that. So I'm sorry, I've had these for like three years. Uh, and some extra ones that we, we didn't use this time that we've used in the past. So feel free to grab those. Tonight, I've kind of set up our set in three different sections. So we have a first opening set with one band. Then we have an acoustic set with another small band. And then after that, a third and final set with a separate separate group of players. So let's just dive into the song flip. As we start out our service, we have a 15 minute countdown with just some kind of chill music. It's gonna end in the key of A because we're gonna begin our service with King of Glory. Uh, it has a new intro from the band One and All. I think it's the church actually that I found on YouTube. They actually sent me the tracks and uh, kind of has like a longer vibey intro that I'm gonna be reading uh, a psalm that this song actually comes out of to kind of kick off our night and just kind of bring some energy into the room. So then it, we do King of Glory normally, and then uh, we go right into House of the Lord, the worship initiative version that is female led. And we're doing that in the key of D. So her first note is an A. So we'll crash out on an A, King of Glory, go into House of the Lord, key of D. After that, I'll actually kind of give some instruction and just like talk to the people about what we're doing here tonight, because for some people, this will be their first time ever being at a night of worship. During that welcome, I'll instruct people to kind of make their way to these different stations if they haven't already begun doing that. We'll kick into Holy Water, just a song that all, our whole team's been wanting to play for so long, and uh, it's a great song. And then bring it down into Waymaker, uh, Key of D. After that, we'll have a little video transition that gets us into this acoustic set. And this will bring me to my first little tip, and that is to consider listener fatigue. An hour long of music is a, is a lot to take. And so you want to break this up. And what I like to do is do an opening set and then do a scaled back set with just acoustics, vocals, kind of gang vocals. All of our vocalists, even our youth praise team is coming on just to kind of bring this worship time where it's kind of a chill moment that people can reflect. We let them be seated. It's a long time to stand as well. So not only listener fatigue, but just fatigue. So consider that, listener fatigue. During our acoustic set, we're gonna be doing three songs, and then out of that, we'll roll into a testimonial video. So that acoustic set, since we're transitioning the stage, is bookended by two videos. Love to incorporate these testimony videos from somebody in your church that has a story. Uh, a guy named Dale is sharing his story, and I love the way he talks about prayer and praise being a way that we worship God, even through the hard times. Out of that, we'll roll into our final set. That includes Spirit of the Living God. We're doing the old hymn to kind of get us into Spirit of the Living God. Then Echo Holy and Agnus Dei. Then our pastor will lead through the Lord's Supper. And our final element is we'll have our families in the church do some family prayer time. We'll open up the altar and we'll kind of sing the blessing over them. And then hopefully the church will join in and just kind of sing that as our final prayer together. So hopefully you can see that the second point that I want to make, I've kind of taken into account, and that is to spread the load. An hour's worth of leading is a lot for one person. I'll be up there the whole time, but uh, sharing the load of leading the worship among vocalists is really important. So if you can do that, I, I highly encourage it. And in my opinion, a third and final important element of a night of worship is actually planning. And that may not be for everyone. You may be in a very uh, charismatic, like flowy kind of worship style, but I want to set my band up for success and have a plan in place. So as I prayed about this in advance, I feel like this is the way the Spirit has led me to craft the service. Now are we open to changing things along the way if we're supposed to, if we really feel that nudge? Yes, you have to be open to that. But uh, I like to plan uh, everything from the transitional words I'm going to talk about, the scriptures I'm going to read, and uh, I think that that honors God. You know, God is a God of order, and uh, I want to do my best to be a good steward of the time that people are giving us here uh, on a Thursday night. So um, directing them, leading them well, and we'll see how it goes. You know, we can only do so much. We're going to worship and uh, point people to Jesus, and that's the goal. All right, guys, we finished up our night of worship. It was a great night. Um, you know, you just, you never know exactly what God is doing in people's hearts and, and maybe the seeds that were planted there of just uh, helping people worship in a new way. But um, I just love getting to do these these times together 
And uh, I encourage you, if you're thinking about it, then uh, if God's kind of laying this on your heart, just try it, just go for it. And it doesn't matter how many people show up. We had way less than usual tonight. We got a snowstorm coming in tonight, Thursday night, I don't know. But it doesn't matter because God was glorified and uh, I think it's, it's a great thing to try. So hopefully these tips, you know, and things that I've learned along the way help you. Remember, if you want all those sheets for the worship stations, just uh, look at that link in the description. And remember, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for God's glory. See you in the next one.